Hi guys, it's me, Chancellor HD, and welcome to this race review for the 2019 Italian Grand Prix. A very good race that occurred at Monza, the final race of the European summer season. And it was Forza Ferrari as they won at their home race, their first home race win since Fernando Alonso in 2010. Great victory. And in this race review, we'll get into how it was done and how all the teams done in what was another very good race in Formula 1. It's becoming a regular occurrence. Great races in Formula 1 as of late. But these are the final results of this Grand Prix. Charles Leclerc only just wins the Italian Grand Prix from Valtteri Bottas. Lewis Hamilton finishes in third. Ricardo finishes P4. Hulkenberg P5. Sixth is Albon. Seventh Perez. Eighth Verstappen. Ninth is Antonio Giovinazzi. Tenth is Lando Norris. And then finishing the race but not finishing in the points is Gasly, Stroll, Vettel, Russell, Raikkonen, Grosjean, Kubica. And retiring, Magnussen, Kvyat and Carlos Sainz. But now, let's get into the teams and start off first with, I guess, the losers um, of the day at the front of the field, Mercedes. And the drivers... Didn't drive at that absolute best today because they did make a couple errors like Lewis Hamilton locking up and going deep at the first chicane and Valtteri made a couple that did cost him the chance to, you know, really go for the victory at the very end of the race. But I think as a team, they tried everything. They tried absolutely everything to win this race. But simply, Ferrari with Charles Leclerc had enough speed, especially on the straights, to win the Grand Prix and I can't really fault them massively for what they've done today. They tried everything. They tried going onto a softer compound that was fresher. They were Valtteri Bottas. They tried to undercut Leclerc. They threw everything at him but Leclerc would not most of the time crack under pressure. So I think a good race for Mercedes. I think they can be happy with the result. Not overly happy because I think the race win was there definitely to be took. But Charles Leclerc just drove so well to get the victory. But, of course, going to Singapore, it's going to be back on top for this team. Next up is Ferrari. And a home victory. Great to see the scenes, you know, at, on the uh, podium. Seeing Leclerc celebrating in front of the Tifosi a home victory. And he drove so well to get it. Did make a mistake at the first chicane, uh, locked up under pressure and went off and uh, almost lost the lead to Lewis Hamilton. So he didn't uh, fully keep it under control when he was under pressure, but his drive, except for that, was very good. He pulled the gap nicely in the first uh, part of the race, in the first stint. He then defended well, maybe a bit too hard from Lewis Hamilton at times in the Grand Prix but I think Charles Leclerc absolutely was the deserving winner of this race he drove so well and I think actually today outperformed the car because again it was not the fastest car on race day no way was it the faster car the Mercedes was but Charles Leclerc outdrove it to go and get the win so great for him Sebastian Vettel though not good for him spinning at the Ascari chicane again bottles it when under pressure what is there more to say? He is so mentally weak and is so prone to mistakes. There's nothing to say anymore. This is just a regular occurrence. He does this all the time. He cannot avoid this happening because it. He just doesn't have the con. Uh, you know the control mentally. He doesn't have the control driving wise. He just doesn't have it anymore. And I think Sebastian Vettel is absolutely done in terms of being a top-level Formula 1 driver. I know that might be blasphemous to say, but he can't compete anymore. He just can't compete. And I think today was further proof of that. But great day for Ferrari. And this is probably going to be their final race victory of 2019 because the rest of the racetracks coming up will not suit their car very well, uh, especially the next race, Singapore, where they will be lucky to finish on the podium. Now, let's get into Red Bull. Not that good of a race. Uh, Alex Albon finishing in P6. He did have a bit of a weird race. Tried to overtake people. He overtook a few cars, but 
not really that good enough, I think, for Albon. I think he should have got on with it more. And, of course, he had a five-second penalty for, um, for passing Magnussen illegally at the second Della Rosia chicane. Yeah, Albon, I, I don't think he drove well enough today. I think he should have beat at least one of the Renaults, considering the race pace that the Red Bull had compared to the Renault. I think he should have got on with it more and got after Nico Hülkenberg. For Max Verstappen... Good drive. I can't say great drive because at the end of the day, he made a mistake at turn one that caused him to pit at the end of the first lap. Uh, and that led to him making an extra pit stop when, if he didn't make that extra pit stop, I think Max Verstappen would have been right there with Albon and also Nico Hülkenberg. So his fault. Good race, you know, to come from 19th to P8, but... It could have been better. Not a good weekend, really, for Red Bull. But in Singapore, of course, where the Red Bull car is going to go very well, Red Bull will be back. You absolutely can guarantee that. Now let's get into the midfield. First off, Renault. This is the best result Renault have had since they came back into Formula 1 as a constructor. P4 and P5, and at times they really did have the pace to be deservingly in that position and at times after they didn't pit they were actually in p2 and p3 the pace of the renault was very strong this weekend and in the race and this is the result they absolutely needed to get back into the fight in the constructors they are a lot closer to mclaren than they were before i i still don't think they'll finish p4 in the constructors because they are very inconsistent but Renault today, you have to say, great day. Both drivers drove very well. And this is what Renault have got to aim for more so with their car. This is where Renault should be in Formula 1. Not competing with Toro Rosso's and racing points. Next up is McLaren. A good day in terms of Lando Norris getting into the top 10. I don't think Lando drove amazingly well. I think he just, you know, got good pace out the car and got into the points, defended well at times to uh, maintain his position, especially from Pierre Gasly after the end of one of the virtual safety cars. But um, it wasn't a great drive, but still P10, good result. Carlos Sainz, though, I really do feel sorry for him because I think he would have finished in P6 for McLaren, but the mechanic at the pit stop for Carlos Sainz did not attach the right front wheel correctly, meaning that Carlos, when he drove away, was out of the race. And that is eight massive points, or seven more points, that they would have got that they lost. And that is critical uh, at times of the season like this. I still think they'll finish P4 in the Constructors, but, you know, mistakes like that, they can't start happening now. They've got to, you know, properly get a move on McLaren and now start scoring some points again. Because if this continues to happen, then Renault might catch them. And, of course, we'll see in Singapore, where I think McLaren will probably go well. Of course, we'll see once we get to Singapore. Uh, next is Alfa Romeo. Similar to McLaren, good with one of their drivers, but the other driver not so good. So Kimi Raikkonen was basically out of the race as it started because somehow Alpha forgot that he did get into Q3 and qualified, of course, on soft tyres. But for some reason, Kimi Raikkonen started on medium tyres. I don't know how you get that so wrong, but, he, uh, but not he did, but they did, the team. And he got a penalty and finished behind Russell and the Williams. Terrible race. Raikkonen has had such bad luck since the um, summer break has ended. He really does need some uh, better luck. Antonio Giovinazzi, though, very good drive. That drive he put in today, that's the kind of drive that he needs to put in in the Alpha. He was quick. He was consistent. He didn't make any mistakes. Um, and got a good points hole for the team i know it's only two points but it's something in the constructors so good drive at his home race for antonio and i think that drive if he can produce that more often i think antonio will absolutely be a good um, formula one driver going forward uh next up is Haas f1 they were actually looking pretty good up until kevin magnuson's absolutely cataclysmic front lockup at the first chicane 
uh, with about 20 laps to go. They were looking good for a point. But then that lockup occurred, and that's probably because the Haas, when it comes to the race, of course, their car is not well balanced. So that's why they ended up pitting Magnussen, and later on he did retire. Grosjean, again, making such simple errors, goes through Ascari on the exit, clips the inside curb, and Roman spins, completely destroys his tyres, and then goes to the back and races around with Robert Kubica. Terrible, terrible day. Um, and yeah, another bad day for the Haas F1 team. But it was looking better race pace wise. Their race pace was looking better than it has been before. So a small positive that you can take from that. Uh, next is Toro Rosso. I do feel sorry for Toro Rosso because I think they deserved the points finish today because you had Daniel Kvyat in the points for quite a long time. And he didn't pit yet. Or he, no, he had just pitted when he... Uh, came out of the pit lane and was in a very good position and I think he could have got after maybe Nico Hulkenberg in the Renault because he was able to pit when other drivers were held up beyond the virtual safety car I think so great pace from Kvyat great drive but he had a water leak I believe during the pit stop and that caused Daniel to retire and that's a big big blow because I think Daniel was absolutely going to finish in the points today and get some more uh, great points for Toro Rosso. Pierre Gasly, unlucky today, Pierre, because he uh, almost got wiped out by Lance Stroll at the exit of the Ascari chicane, and that definitely cost him probably enough time to put him in the points ahead of Lando Norris. So shame for him, but good drive by Pierre, and all of a sudden, he's gone back to Toro Rosso, Pierre, and he's driving very well again. But with Toro Rosso... The pace was there, but the execution was not. Hopefully, they can get that balance right in Singapore. And the last midfield team, of course, is Racing Point. For me, driver of the day, and you guys can let me know in the comments uh, who you think the driver of the day is, but for me, it is Sergio Perez. P18 to P7, and held off Max Verstappen nicely at the end of the race. Very good drive, and I think deserves a lot of praise for that drive, because... He's not exactly in a top car. It's not, you know, easy to come from the back to nearly the front of the midfield in a car like he's driving. So for me, Perez is driver of the day. Great drive. Good overtakes. You know, overtakes when it mattered most on Magnussen and Giovinazzi and drivers like that. Very good drive by Perez. But I do feel sorry for Lance Stroll because he was running in P8, made another very good start. And then Sebastian Vettel, after his spin, hit Stroll whilst Vettel was trying to spin around. Vettel absolutely deserved the penalty he got for that. Lance, of course, did get a penalty for forcing Gasly into the gravel, which he did deserve. But, you know, Sebastian caused the whole thing to happen. I feel sorry for Lance because I think he would have finished around P7, P6. He was very strong with his pace. And even when he dropped near the back, his pace was actually really good. But he couldn't get back into the points because he was too far away after having to take the penalty and, you know, spin and all that stuff. So it is a shame that happened. But nice weekend for this team. Pace was very, very good. It was absolutely there, the pace. And if it was, say, let's say if Racing Point were luckier, I think they would have absolutely got a good double points finish. And the final team, of course, is Williams. who were not quite at the back. Robert Kubica was um, of all the runners that finished. But George Russell finished in P14 and, I, and only just uh, lost out to Vettel for P13 at the end. Very good drive by Russell. He was only about, I think, three quarters of a pit stop away from points. Very good drive. And again, showing why he is such a good driver. But guys, that is it for the European season. And that is it for the 2019 Italian Grand Prix. What a race we had. And hopefully in Singapore, we, we will have more of the same.